A changed football championship format and different arrangements in 2018. It's a Saturday evening throw-in for the Munster final, although some things still have a familiar ring to them because it is Cork versus Kerry. In Kerry, they are a resourceful people and Cork on the doorstep is rich in resources and in recent times, happy to help. It has a university with a vibrant Kerry population and modern industry that provide Kerry emigres with a career springboard. It also has a football team that once or twice in a decade reminds Kerry of its mortality. The fixture down the years has had one telling characteristic. The closer the sides get, the meatier the challenges. Not all of them quite Queensbury. Back when Cork were making a fist, sometimes literally, of being top cat in Munster, legend has it that Billy Morgan saw the bomber and Ogie refreshing themselves in his pub. He showed them the door. But overall, for Cork football, so often unloved, its supporting role in the life of Kerry is taken as fact. Was there ever a more Kerry compliment than the 1970s grant of second best team in Ireland status? Bless of liege indeed. And yet, no sane sporting mind could question the record. Apart from the 90s, when Cork won five monsters, all rebel teams came alive to Kerry. Even hard-won provincial triumphs were almost inevitably traduced by slappings in Croke Park. So what's new today? Well, the stadium's maiden monster Classico has thickened the trickle of visitors from the southwest. But alarmingly for Cork, many prospective travellers were more worried about the parking restrictions around the new park. Cork secured pride and showed appetite versus tip. Today, they face a Kerry team so young they'd barely blunt a collective match day razor blade. A September crack at the other capital city, the blue one must be the ultimate motivating force at work behind the walls of the kingdom's new multi-million euro HQ. This evening may prove a pebble in their boot and no more. But can a maiden visit to one Park Nua inspire Cork to ask questions of Kerry that are more pressing than just finding a place to throw the car. It's the first Monster Football final to be staged here at Porky Cave since 2014. And Cork this evening are looking for a first championship win over their great rivals since 2012. Kerry are looking for a sixth Monster title in a row, and that is something that they last achieved in the 1970s. The throw in for this evening's big match is at 7 o'clock. Yes, you're very welcome indeed to the programme. It's a lovely Saturday evening here in Cork. I presume it is where you are as well. Hopefully, we'll get a good match as well to look forward to. Looking forward to it with me, we have in studio Kieran Whelan and Sean Cavanagh. Gentlemen, you're very welcome and you're particularly welcome, of course, because for the two of you lads, this is your first time at the new stadium. It is, surely, yes. Uh, I think the last time I was here it was 2002. Yeah. A dreary National League match, I suspect. David Clifford was running around as Bob the Builder pyjamas at that point, so... <laughs> Looking forward to the first Munster final and I hope it, it brings everything it deserves. Yeah, I, and obviously the weather and everything else has, is adding to this kind of uh, carnival atmosphere. And speaking of carnivals, there's one out the back there, Jenny Green and the RTE Orchestra are playing later on tonight. So it's a buzz around here. Yeah, it's brilliant, Mike. And lucky to be here. Like a brilliant, fantastic new stadium and one of the biggest rivalries we have in, in Gaelic football over the years. You know, it's a, it's a new environment for both teams. You know, uh, Kerry were here last night. They had a run out here last night to get used to the place. Uh, so, listen, it's the first of a rotation of provincial finals. And I think having provincial finals on Saturday night, I think, is a good thing. I think it's, you know, I think Saturday sure. night is what the players like. They, I think they prefer a Saturday night game. And uh, I hope, hopefully it's an experiment that works. Yeah, and uh, as you said a moment ago, Kerry, you were here last night, and this is all the modern game as well. They were out in photo because you bumped into them last night. Yeah, they were down. They were down last night, and uh, you know, they, as I said, they had a run out, a long day for them down there today. Uh, but like they've, I think they've nine players coming to play and you know make their debut in a Munster senior yeah. uh, f final here, and so it's 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 a huge test for them. So I'd say Fitzmaurice wants to get them down. He wants to get them together, get them ready. It's probably not something that they've traditionally done in the past, but they got the benefit of a run out here in the sun last night so uh, they have to put all the preparations in and be ready. It'll probably settle them, a young Kerry team yeah. and if anything I think Cork would, would have maybe hoped this game was maybe in a more parochial ground. You look out there and it's, it's, it's not a full house. Yeah. I think Cork needs to get 
this game into an arm wrestle and, and, and they yeah. need that parochial like feel. Like some and, of the arm wrestles we saw in the clips <laughs> and games past there. Yeah, there was a few, a few hits. Uh, the spirit of Noel, Noel O'Leary even would have been coming through yeah. in, in our era and I think that's what Cork think, needs today. Cork needs that aggression from yeah, where it goes. I think, but I think they have to leave an imprint on them. And I think like Cork played with intensity against Tipperary and it was something we hadn't seen from Cork over the last few years. But they, the work rate, the work ethic that they have, they've got Kerry's strength is from number 10 to number 15. They've got to bring high intensity and aggression to this game. And let's hope it's not some of the imprints that we saw in the clips there a little bit earlier on. OK, it is time for us to get the team news on this evening's Monster Final. And with us in the commentary box is Marty Morrissey. Thank you very much, Michael. It is an absolutely beautiful evening here in Parker Creeve. Kerry bidding for their 80th Munster title, Cork for their 38. But as Michael mentioned earlier, Cork haven't managed to beat the Kingdom since the Munster semi-final in 2012. My co-commentator is former Donegal and Mayo star Martin Carney. Have Cork any chance? They have a chance to get stuck into Kerry from the word go and don't let Kerry build up a lead. That's what happened last year. They had a very poor start to the second half last year as well. So start like devils from the word go and they have a chance. Will they start go? Well, but we'll see because this is the Cork team that will start. The Cork goalkeeper, Mark White, only plays in his second senior championship match in his career this evening, having made his debut against Tipperary. Mark is from Clonakilty. Jamie O'Sullivan is the rock on this Cork football team, although he's no relation to the hurling rock, Dermot O'Sullivan. Sam Ryan and Kevin Flahiv are the corner men. Cork number six is Nemo Ranger, Stephen Cronin. The Cork City man has two country boys on the wings, Kevin Crowley from Mill Street and from Moyes, Tomás Clancy. The Rebels' centre field is very strong and has massive potential with former hurler Aidan Walsh at number eight and the team captain from St. Finbar's, Ian Maguire, right beside him. It's an all-West Cork half-forward line with Sean White then to the 40 and with Kevin O'Driscoll and Rory Dean performing on the wings. The Cork inner line is the main scoring thread with Mark Collins at full forward. John O'Rourke and Luke Connolly are top of the right and top of the left, respectively. The Kerry goalkeeper is Shane Murphy and comes to Parky Cueve with an impressive CV between his club, Dr Crokes, and his underage career with the Kingdom. Peter Crowley now appears to be first choice at full-back for his manager, Eamon Fitzmaurice, with Jason Foley in one corner and Breen Obyugliach completing that inner line. Pag Morley from Temple Noe in the south of the county is the Kerry number six, with Paul Murphy and Gavin White providing defensive cover and attacking flair on the wings. Experience with a touch of youthful exuberance is the cocktail that Kerry have at centre field with David Moore at eight, Jack Barry right beside him. There are two Kenmare footballers in the Kerry half forward line, that's Sean O'Shea and Stephen O'Brien. Michal Burns and Dr Crokes is at number 10. Ah now, what about this football forward line? David Clifford, Paul Ganey and James O'Donoghue have the potential to be the best inside line, not just in Parky Cueve, but indeed nationwide. Eamon Fitzmaurice in his sixth championship season and is essentially building a new team. New Cork manager Ronan McCarthy has a serious challenge on his hands and the two managers have been speaking to our Claire. Uh, Ronan, your first uh, Munster final as, uh, as manager, Kerry in the new park, can you halt their dominance in Munster? Well, we're here um, to, to try and do that. Um, look, we were looking forward to it from, from a long way out and uh, you know, we started back whenever, whenever it was last November, so um, we've been waiting for this day and, and it's here now and all we have to do is go and perform. Crucial for you that you get into this game early and not let them build up a lead? Yeah, look, looking at previous matches, you would certainly think that that would be important, but I suppose we've tried to, to say to the players, so, you know, let's see how the game plays out. If you know there is an early goal or two or whatever, let's not panic and let's keep playing, let's keep doing the right things throughout the game and let's see where that takes us. Uh, Eamon, you've won the last five Munster titles in a row. Most people are predicting you'll make it six tonight. How do you keep that sort of talk, I suppose, away from your players? Yeah, no, we don't listen to that type of talk, um, Claire. Every game is on its merits. Uh, we know that every time we come down here, we haven't been here in a couple of years, it's a tough venue to come to. A record wouldn't be the best. If you go back to 2000, I think Cork would have the upper hand if you take all the years into account. So uh, nothing ever easy down here, and we're prepared for a big battle for sure. Yeah, and it is getting closer to throw-in time here at Porky Key. Just before that, we are going to take a commercial break. better when you've all the facts. This year, Super Valley will donate 2.6 million euro to GAA clubs, proud sponsor of the Senior Football Championship.
the locals just love a Kerry Cork final. The crack is mighty, the trade is good, the match result follows suit. You talk about the Rebels, you talk about pride. But Cork have one last chance, quickly taken. That's it, it's Ike Murphy, yes it's in! Cork with the greater balance, greater unity, some deadly finishing. Colm O'Neill to illustrate that point. O'Neill has now gained 11 points. Ball floated in. Hudson gets a touch. Parker back in the Munster final. Kerry, the closest of neighbours, the keenest of rivals. The second half of extra time. Dennis Morton recovers and Sean Walsh, and that's one goal and three points from Sean Walsh. Into Obi Norton. The hand pass into Mikey Sheehy. Kerry's goal, Mikey Sheehy, the score. And it comes in here for Dixon O'Sullivan. This is dangerous. O'Sullivan rifles it in. And Kerry leads. Pretty magnificent warriors go into battle. The province of Munster. It is six years since Cork last won the Munster Championship. And a big win it was too, beating their great rivals Kerry by a clear 12 points. A tighter margin this evening would do them just fine, I suspect. All right, then, let's get some further thoughts on this evening's final as we go down pitch side to join Claire McNamara. Yes, good evening to you, Michael. Well, I was supposed to be joined by a Kerry man and a Cork woman. Unfortunately, Colm Cooper has been delayed making it here to Parky Creek. But I am joined by Cork's uh, Breed Stack, a winner of 11 Munster football titles. I know you've just uh, called time on your own playing career, Breed, and you were down at the women's Munster final just earlier. Cork, a great comeback there and a huge win against Yeah, Kerry. massive, massive win, yeah. So brilliant. tonight, ahead of this one, can that inspire? Do you think the men can shrug off their underdog status? Uh, of course. Like, I suppose, you know, going in as underdogs, it's a position that most teams would like to be in. Uh, you're going in, you know, I suppose, with, with no shackles on you and it's uh, just a case of going out and, and uh, give it hell for leather for, for, the full, for the full time. What do you think that Rona McCarthy ha has brought to this group since he took over? Um, I suppose he's definitely brought a new vigour into the group. Um, you can see they're playing with a lot more um, aggression and I suppose a lot more freedom. There's a lot of trust in the team and um, it's brilliant to see a lot of new players and new faces in, um, sprinkled with a, a bit of experience as well, which is so important. And, um, you know, I, I suppose I was at the match up in Simple Stadium up in Tipperary and, you know, the lads put on such a show up there. Um, it was fabulous to see brilliant football, free-flowing football and uh, everyone working tirelessly for each other. Yeah, that was an impressive win, which will give them confidence. But where do you see them trying to undo Kerry tonight. Where do you think Kerry might be vulnerable? Um, I suppose Kerry is probably their first time playing here, you know, since the stadium was built. Um, I suppose they have a lot of new debutants as well. Um, so, you know, they can take, I suppose, a bit of solace from that, that, you know, it's probably not the, not the Kerry team of old. Um, but in saying that, you know, Cork, uh, Cork have, to, have to deal with a massively potent full forward line. And, um, you know, I've no doubt Ronan McCarthy is probably putting structures in place. Um, you know, um, Sean White is, is um, named centre forward. Can't imagine he'll start there, that he'll come back as a, a wing back and um, you know Stephen Cronin will probably deploy into a sweeper position mm -hmm. and um, you know that has to give Cork backs um, uh, I suppose a sense of urgency in that they need to be aggressive in the tackle um, and try to cut out um, you know the potent carry forward line. So call it first would it be Cork or Kerry? Um, uh, like I, I Kerry have a fantastic fantastic forward line but um, this is a new look Cork and I suppose that intensity that they brought up in Tipperary uh, coupled with a great uh, Cork ladies win today hopefully you know we'll go for the double tonight. <laughs> okay Breed well thanks very much for joining us and your thoughts uh, Michael from pitch side back up to you. Thanks Claire. Now by the way apart from this monster football final we have on offer for you this evening we are also offering you a very nice trip to the All-Ireland football final details in our competition a little bit later on. Kieran, let's talk some more about Cork, as Breed was doing there a moment ago, and you have been studying the Cork setup. Yeah, Ron, Ron McCarthy is a very simple game plan, uh, Michael. It, it's based around hard work, but it's also man to man. Uh, they, 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 they don't play a, a zonal defence, they, they track the runners, and they play with one man extra back. Large amount of time in Stephen Crone, and sometimes it can be Tom Clancy, and they probably get Sean White dropping back to cover uh, their position. So you can see against Tipperary, it was very, very effective. Uh, it's structured, it's organised and based around hard work and, and Cronin had a great game. Here we see you know, Tom Clancy's the one this time who's back in the position. Quimbling gets along the, the sideline and what do you want your sweeper to do? You want him to cut off an obvious goal chance. He turns Jamie O'Sullivan and he comes across. He's the, he's the man to come in and make the tackle. Again, we see Stephen Cronin here back, right, sitting in front of the full forward line. 
and picks up a great ball here. And, and this is where Kerry's strength is. Kerry's strength is in their forward line. Cork's mm. defence is going to have to be very structured, very organised tonight. Here again, you see Jamie O'Sullivan here with Michael Quinlan. He'll go into the stand with him if he has to. That was his job. You can see him tracking Gini tonight. And again, Cronin is back protecting the full back line and he comes in gets it gets a half block so it's it's a very simple plan um it's going to be a difficult night from up against Kerry's potent forward line but the other thing they do Michael is they flood midfield and Kevin O'Driscoll and Rory Dean go into midfield it's going to leave them a little bit limited in the last in the last third but I think midfield tonight is going to be a crucial battleground both keepers Shane Murphy and Mark White Pull a large majority of kickouts long in, in, yeah. in the semi finals. And I think if Cork can physically get at Kerry and give themselves a platform in the middle, they've got to win that midfield battle because if Kerry get enough ball into the forward line, Cork ain't coming out on top. Well, Kieran's mentioned it a couple of times that Kerry forward line, and I mean, there was some serious talent there, Sean. It's the best forward line in Ireland. Michael, it's as simple as that, that quartet of Sean O'Shea, David Clifford, Paul Ganey, and James O'Donoghue. You can see the link play they have here. What I love about them is is Sean O'Shea on, a, on his right foot and he's heavily involved here against Clare you can see him picking the ball up deep the best man gets the ball every time you can see him, Sean giving it into David Clifford here Paul Ganey going, going on the loop David looks as if he could shoot himself no give it to the better man and that's Paul Ganey who was immense in that game he kicked seven points off the, off the right this time here it is again Sean O'Shea uh, Ganey Sean O'Shea in, in, in behind and, he, and there's Ganey that man Ganey again popping up and this time on the left the balance they have, the length they have, the coordination they have, they didn't really let them all loose in the National League. They, they were coy, they used an awful mm -hmm. lot of players in the National League, but they let them loose against Clare. They kicked 32 points. It wasn't massive opposition, but that's seriously impressive football. It certainly is. Teams that are in the parade, as we can see, lads. So, Kieran, who is it for you? Uh, listen, I think Kerry's forward line is going to come true, but I'm expecting you know, this Cork team are grown in confidence. If, if they're in it after 20, 25 minutes, uh, they have an outside chance, but I think the Kerry forward line will just prove too strong. An outside chance for Kieran. What do you think, Sean? I, I think Kerry will be too strong. I think Kerry will have five or six points on them. And, and if they get those points early, it, it could be a hard night for Cork. All right, lads, thanks for that. Kerry, of course, have dominated Monster football down through the years, and this evening they are chasing an 80th provincial title. In the commentary box for us, Marty Morrissey and Martin Carney. Thank you very much, Michael. Well, you're not just looking this evening at a magnificent stadium, but at a venue steeped in sporting history. In days long gone, it was the Cork Athletic Grounds. Then in 1976, this place was revamped, redesigned and called Parky Cueve. The Munster football final here that year between Cork and Kerry was totally overcrowded with supporters who had to be left in along the side of the pitch and footballers trying to kick sideline balls with Gardaí and fans all around them. That's Spillane recalls waiting around the Cork goalpost for a 45 to be kicked apparently and then somebody came along and hit him with an umbrella. Memories, those were the days my friend. 32 years later a new chapter is about to be written this evening as Kerry footballers play here in 21st century Park Equive for the very first time. In fact, nine Kerry players have never played here at senior level before so in its own way GA history is being made. Since 1986 Cork have had six different managers Billy Morgan being clearly the most successful but the seventh and latest is Ronan McCarthy. He's from Douglas here in Cork City and played on the Cork football team from 1996 to 2002. A crowd of 25,000 are expecting. Don't be surprised if it is a little bit more. 22 degrees at least in the southern capital. It's beautiful here. The word on the street is that fans are coming here not just to see a monster football final, but also to see at first hand the first real test for the new dynamic duo of Kerry football. Sean O'Shea at centre forward and the sensational David Clifford, both 19 years of age. Sweltering heat, the Artean band is here. Park Equive is just, honestly, it's just fantastic. And Mark Carney's here, also like the Kerry footballers, for the very first time. What do you think, Mark? Oh, what a setting, Mark. This is a magnificent setting altogether. And a glorious evening. And it's a, a setting, actually, that should inspire footballers to really play out of their skins. To my mind, like a Cork, have a great incentive this evening to actually start their career, so to speak, start their time in Porky Keith with a win. But I'm afraid, like a lot of the boys in the studio, that they carry attack if they give sufficient ball, are capable of causing havoc. So there we're looking at uh, number 10, that's Kevin O'Driscoll. He's part of an old Cork, West Cork half forward line, joining Sean White from Connie Kilty and Rory Dean from Bantry Blues. But uh, the people I met around Cork City this evening were neutral observers and they were coming to watch this new young Kerry side. 
Park haven't managed to beat him since the 2012 Munster semi-final and indeed under Ronan McCarthy, Ian uh, Maguire, the Cork captain from St. Fembra, has emphasized in a news interview with me during the week, Accord, doing yeah, the simple I things and no doing them well. But how they the compose their defence is going to be beam. very, very important. Yeah, it'll be very interesting to see, Marty, do they actually play a sweeper? Because that full forward line, to be honest with you, need an extra person to actually shield the Cork call back line. There is an excitement around Cork City and County that I haven't seen for some time. The Cork hurlers always get massive support, but Cork footballers, well, you kind of have to prove yourself to the Cork public before there is a connection. The performance against Tipperary seemed to indicate that Cork were on the way back under Ronan McCarthy. For Kieran Brannigan, this is his second Munster Championship match. He refereed Cork to very last year in Parky Ray. Yeah, well, there's a great incentive, actually, to be honest about Cork. Like, they haven't won a game since 2012 against Kerry in, in, in the Championship. You know, they've lost four of the last meetings, drawn one, or, uh, and basically only won one. And today, as I said, in this setting, in such a beautiful evening, by God, they have some incentive to go out, show the devil in themselves, play with hunger, play with belief, and go and beat Kerry. Do they have the belief? Do they have that conviction? As uh, there is already a slight delay, there's a, a drop of uh, water, perhaps a mouthpiece uh, required. That's, that's what it is, that's what the referee wanted to come shoot for uh, Jack Barry from the Coil Club, based in Killeen and Oak Park of Tralee. Kieran Brannigan is certainly asserting himself even before the game starts. Jack Barry and Ian Maguire are already getting to know each other, hip to hip. And why he just doesn't throw in the ball and get on with it, I don't really know. Ulster referee, monster football final. Kerry won the task, playing from left to right as we look at it. Onto the ball first is Sean White. Can play anywhere, multi-talented. Dropping it in to the... Kerry full back line. It'll be a test of the fitness of these young players as well because uh, of the sweltering heat. There's an extra water boy going to be uh, given and allowed. Normally it's two, but on this occasion it's going to be three to make sure that uh, the footballers are well hydrated on a warm evening here in the southern capital. Brino Bjogliach sending it down. Beaten David Clifford for the first time, which will give the Cork defence a little bit of confidence. Sean White, who played half back line before, now playing in centre half forward, giving over to Stephen Cronin from Nemo Rangers. Who in turn lays it off. And away come Cork. Down first, Mark Collins. Gone in full back at the moment is uh, Tyke Morley. Or at least uh, he's marking Mark Collins. There's a little touch, but there's enough there to retain control. And Cork recycle it. Back out for Sean White again. Dropping it in. Oh, beautiful catch. What's on here? Flick it across. Colock. The Rebels have landed in Parky Quave with a sensational goal after a minute and 22 seconds. The Kerry defence, who have been leaking goals throughout the league, have sensationally conceded a goal in the Munster final, and there isn't two minutes played. Well, Jamie O'Sullivan was coming through and he managed to get the touch. Yeah, but great play by Sean White. Just uh, Sullivan coming through from the back. He injured himself in the process of for Great vision from Rory Dean that time. Saw the overlapping fullback who put it into the empty net. But before that, Marty, the combination of play from Collins, from Connolly, and from the st uh, centre back, Stephen Cronin, that's the way Cork need to play today. Well, Jamie O'Sullivan, the rock, as I called him in my introduction. Uh, is from Bishopstown, 27 years of age. He's uh, there getting some medical attention. Played full back in the National Football League in uh, 2014 against Mayo. This is Ronan McCarthy. Big day for him, and it's a wonderful start 
because certainly if Cork are going to beat Kerry, they, go ha they have to de defend really well, be very well composed, but also run at this Kerry defence and try and expose them. Very much so, but what they showed there in that was great combination, a combative hunger and a belief. And just watch it here, the vision, it must be said, of Medine that time to see the overlapping Jamie O'Sullivan was top class. And the finish was a very, very simple one. But I think in the process, he hurt his shoulder when he collided with the uh, goal post. Just thinking of Rory Dean there and that wonderful catch. Uh, you will recall the great Declan Barron from Bantley Blues. Nice indeed. What a fielder. I mean, he'd be very proud of R Rory Dean. I met his grandmother uh, here earlier. She's here. She's over 90 years of age. Very proud to have her grandson playing for Cork today in this Munster final. That's right. Very often the 70s the player they all looked to and talked about was Jimmy Barry Murphy. But Declan Barron was some player, some full forward, a great foil to the likes of Jimmy Barry Murphy. But already I think we have a sub coming in. Brian O'Driscoll is coming on. And he He's coming into the uh, Cork team as Jamie O'Sullivan. Who requires team, some uh, three, further Jamie attention. Just looking down off camera here. He seems Brian to be uh, doing great uh, medical service just around the neck injury to make sure he's okay. Now, so let's see, Kerry, what you're made of having conceded that goal. He scored 32 times against Clare, didn't score a goal. He only conceded 10 points. Here's James O'Donoghue laying it back as Kerry tried to regroup and refocus. First opportunity for David Clifford. First touch over the bar. Keep an eye on number 13 and number 11 because these two 19 year olds are absolutely brilliant. Oh, they're lethal. But the combination played that time and the efficiency of, of Clifford as he took that point. Now, he's been marked, must be said, by Sam Ryan. Number two has gone over on him. But the combination played that time is a joy to watch and it's something the Cork are going to have to kind of have a plan to withstand for the remainder of the game. Interesting now the kickouts here, Martin, because against Clare, Kerry move forward. They're going to try and test out Mark White's kickouts and try and force him to go into the middle of the field. And on that occasion, it's a wonderful catch by David Moore. So now, this is where Kerry are going to be good. Look at the speed, look at the stamina, look at the finish! Brilliant goal! What a response! Absolutely brilliant run! All the way from South Kerry, from beautiful Ken Mayer, here comes Stephen O'Brien. Absolutely mesmerising. Traditionalists will have loved the high fielding of David Moore, the dispatch of the ball, the actual knife-like way that O'Brien went through the defence and rocketed to the roof of the net. That is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful example of attacking football. Yes, it's not the World Cup. It is that scoreline. Cork one goal, Kerry one goal and a point. Five minutes gone in this Munster final. And already it's sparkling into an open affair between these two neighbouring counties and great rivals. Cork cannot go forward and then not track back because when Kerry get a bit of space, like this man, David Clifford, getting a suck, second touch, he's curling it in. This time it's gone to the left and right. Yeah, but what is, the, what is noticeable, I know there's only five minutes gone, but it's the openness, the absence of sweepers on either side, the willingness of players to actually use the ball long and creatively. And both sets of players have adapted a very positive attitude in the opening couple of minutes. Brian O'Driscoll returns again to the dugout, which means that Jamie O'Sullivan is fully recovered. Mark White, this time finds find Stephen Cronin. Full challenge on from David Clifford, wins the possession back, steps away from the challenge, lays it off quickly. Clifford is gone, Corker exposed, it's Sean O'Shea, here comes Ken Mayer. oh off the crossbar, back again, there's a chance, big defending Cork are under siege, they're under pressure and they're going to concede a 45. Well, we are going to be treated, I feel, to a thriller in Parky Creed. My God, we're being absolutely treated to a mesmerising display of forward play by Kerry. That time going through, Sean O'Shea hit the ball up the underneath of the bar, but it's the quality and the speed of the movement, the interchanging of passing, the support play that they're uh, go, uh, doing. But the defence that time, in fairness to Cork, regrouped very well. Now it's a 45. Just 19 years of age. Can't play under 20 because he's played senior championship. That's Sean O'Shea. League debut against Donegal when he scored seven points. And he repeated the dose against Clare. Mark White, goalkeeper from Clonic Kilty, brother of Sean, the centre half forward. And I think both of the Whites are going to be uh, quite active in this Munster final. The brothers, the White brothers, played junior hurling indeed with uh, Clonic Kilty as well, so dual stars at club level. This is Sean O'Shea. University College Cork student in his first championship season. Two All-Ireland minor medals already on the mantelpiece as he graduates to a higher level. 
and this feels this one. That ball is well wide. Second wide of the match for the Kingdom of Kerry. Well, the advantage that Cork had is now gone. They get it very quickly, but this very attacking, so swift, so innovative, and so resourceful. Fabulous stuff to watch. I, I think this is important, Martin. The Kerry and I think Cork forwards will also go onto the forwards as we look at this on the outside of the boat. Oh my word! Great score. Yeah. Great score by Paul Ganey. Yeah, already we can see panic stations in the court defence. The they first ball that went long, David Bourne uh, fielded very well. And now the two short ones they have got have been intercepted also. The Kerry attacker very alert. They're defending those kickouts very well. And notice they are pushing up. That's the point I was making, and I believe Cork will do the same. Yes, but it's going to force there for Mark White to go long, but Bourne is very is majestic out there. And as Martin says, he's forced to go long. Of course, Ian Maguire. Cork retain possession. Rory Dean laying it off. To left corner back, Kevin Flav. Over to left half back, Tomas Clancy from Fomoy. Giving it back to the Banshee Blues man. And away he goes. It opens up in front of him. Can he finish? Staley's going strong to fast. And it's a repeat of the first goals. It's not action replay. Cork respond with the second goal. This time, Mark Collins. But a wonderful one once again by Rory Dean. And they are celebrating in the stands. Look at this man go oh. from West Cork. Laying it across to another West Cork man. Back at the next bend. This is fantastic stuff all together. Talk about it. Dean doing exactly the same thing as he did the first time. Coming in that left wing, stripping the uh, Kerry defence bare. And this time I think we had up in support Mark Collins, who again effortlessly took, uh, put the ball into the back of the net. But the Cork attack along this left wing are starting to kind of find a lot of joy. Great down is from Rory Dean. Lays it off quickly. Fires the Cork captain from the bars around the Tolker area of Cork City. On the ball there is Luke Connolly, Nemo Rangers man, beat on this occasion by Jason Foley. One back, away goes the Nemo man, he's hitting it with the outside of the boat, and it sails between the posts! Listen to the cork roar! This is really impressive. Early days, not even ten minutes gone, thanks be to God. Not even ten minutes gone, but the game has been enriched by a great display of attacking football from both sides. And just look at how attractive the cold can be when you have two teams going at it positively, going at it and using the kick pass to effect. This is wonderful stuff to watch. Tide Morley laying it down for his James O'Donoghue. Pulls the brakes, comes back outside, looking for somebody available. The only man at the moment is Michal Burns. He drops it in. Mark White comes off his goal line, only in his second championship match, made his debut against Tipperary. Laying it off as Cork counter-attack and again it's that man right corner back on this occasion Sam Ryan one of uh, two St Finbar's players on the starting 15 that contested the county final against Nemo Rangers last year in the centre is Stephen Cronin played in the All-Ireland Cup final you will recall against Curafin of Galway not a good day for Nemo great day indeed for Curafin but we've only had almost 11 minutes and look at that scoreboard 2-1 for Cork 1-2 for Kerry all the scores coming from play remarkable Ian McGuire's pass just going behind Rory Dean sideline ball for Kerry going to be taken quickly Kieran Brannigan the referee blows the whistle for the foul on Sean O'Shea Yes, and it's very noticeable that uh, Jimmy O'Sullivan, who is named a fullback, is playing out around the centre half back position and is attacking repeatedly. Peter Crowley, beautiful ball into the path of David Clifford. Away he goes. Sam Ryan is only chasing air, but Clifford on this occasion sends it wide. Third wide of the match for Kerry, and David Clifford's second attempt going to the wrong side of the pups. There's so much happening here at the moment, and both te teams are so cohesive up front. They're so ruthless also in their finishing. It's just great, great stuff. Kick out from Mark Watt. Up goes Ian McGuire. Breaking ball. Favors on this occasion, Kevin Odriska lays it into the middle. Whatever about the carry attack, the carry defense are having problems. Aiden Watch back out to his midfield partner, Ian McGuire. Kerry can play the flamboyant football or call the Cork can play the flamboyant football as well they're queuing up at this side of the field Tomas Clancy is option number one he's going to go for it 
He's hitting it with conviction. Is it matched by accuracy? The umpire's going to signal wide. First wide of the match for Cork, coming after 12 and a half minutes of play. Yes, but they'll be delighted. Ronald McCarthy will be delighted the way they have settled into the game, the way they have taken the game to Kerry. Kerry know uh, that they're certainly in a, in a match today, but the football being played by both sides, it's so impressive to watch, it's so enjoyable to watch, and great movement from both teams. Where comes uh, Kevin Hunt. Cork sticking in. Admirably, three for the home side. Going to be taken by Sean White. Plenty of options available. Ian McGuire returns the pass and back to him again from Kevin O'Driscoll. A little bit crowded in the middle. Cork need to open it up now a little bit. Aidan Walsh from Douglas comes Kevin Flav. Over for his Mark Collins. Keeping it low. Not a great ball for any forward. Should be a defender's, and it is. Taken up by Brino Bjogliak and laying it off quickly. Gavin White from Dr. Croke's Club in Killarney. Another one of the players of two minor All Irelands. Paul Ganey. Oh, that's a beautiful ball. Court defence. Finding it a little bit difficult. James O'Donoghue leading it back. David Clifford to O'Donoghue. The threesome up front are going to be lethal. And the understanding between them. What a, what a wonderful diagonal ball that created the opportunity in the first place. Yeah, mesmerising movement, though. I mean, the way, for example, that time Ganey moved out to the side, Clifford took the ball, lovely little interchange between Clifford and James O'Donoghue. But it was the quality of the crossfield ball was a joy to watch. Means that everybody in the... Kerry full forward line have now all scored a point. And they are the targets, no doubt. Not alone for the Kerry players further out the field, but indeed for the Cork defence as well. James O'Donoghue. Over towards Paul Murphy and Rat Moore. Dropping this in. Oh, it's straight between the posts and over the bar. Time and time again, Kerry players are coming off great freedom to move forward. No such thing as marking zones or anything else. If they see the opportunity to drive forward, they'll hit the space in the knowledge that the ball is going to be delivered in there. Never played Kerry minors, and when I see that happening, I love to see these young players continue on and be determined to get their place and have a wonderful senior inter county career. Well, you have that contrast out there, so much expected of the likes of David Clifford and Sean O'Shea, who have had a stellar minor career. And then, as you say, in contrast, Paul Murphy, you know, never played them and he's playing so well equally. Signs are level for the first time in Parky Cave. And it's again Paul Murphy that's coming forward. He lays it off, and here comes Stephen O'Brien, goal scorer. Somehow manages to scramble it loose. Sean O'Shea, dead straight in front of the post. Heads down towards Black Rock, and the white flag will be raised. Five of the six Kerry forwards have now scored. Yeah, but when you think of all of these scores, they've all come in different ways. Some of them from close in, most of them from distance, but equally, you know, every one of the players you say has been involved in them. But apart from the actual efficiency and accuracy of their finishing, the, the interplay that leads up to those is of the highest quality. We have now got three goals and six points shared between these two teams and every score from play now well, that's scale of football well that's what people want to watch they don't want these watch the watch you know the games for process and systems are all the all the rage they want to see players going at it going you know playing with freedom david moore and it's not going to go between the posts it's heading down towards the marina if anybody sees the ball David will be disappointed with that effort. Four wides for Kerry in this Munster final, but they do lead by one. Yeah, the funny thing is that time when David Moore got the ball outside, all of the Kerry team were, uh, Kerry forwards rather, were grouped very, very close to one another. It is very noticeable that what Kerry did against Clare in Killarney is obviously a clear tactic. They're not, al not allowing the short kick outs there. Kerry forwards are pushing forward, forcing Mark White to go long. Now he went short this time and you could feel the palpitations. <laughs> Uh, around Parky Creeve amongst the Cork uh, supporters. Scramble just outside the Kerry 65 metre line. It's still there, no free. Good refereeing to allow the play to develop. Round of applause 
I think for him as much as for the footballers, David Moore and sending it down towards another David. And this is David Clifford. Staying with him is Sam Ryan, and away he goes. Taken down, however. And there is going to be trouble with a capital T, Mark McCarney, every time David Clifford gets the ball. Yeah, but the thing about Sam Ryan, Sam Ryan is playing David Clifford from behind. He's not getting up alongside him or trying to play it from him in front. He's giving him too much room every time the ball is delivered. Yeah, Clifford has far too much space. Referee noting the name of Sam Ryan. The doctor gives him uh, some medical attention as well. That's uh, Aidan Kelleher, Dr. Kelleher from Clondrid. And it's a black card. Now, that's going to be a change in the Cork defence. Deliberate foul. Cork supporters don't like the decision. Disappointment for Sam Ryan, but this is the reason. Deliberate foul here. Well, it's definitely card, and he does pull him down, and the referee is deemed it to be a deliberate one, and therefore, if that, if that is the case, it is a black card offence. James O'Donoghue takes the point. That's his second. On Bomber Liston in amongst the crowds. What a wonderful player he was at full forward during the Mick O'Dwyer era. He was something else. Yes, and again, let's just watch the kick out here. The goalkeeper is looking out. Every carry forward is pushing up. It's going to have to go along again. I just sense this is a long-term plan when uh, Kerry meets the reigning All-Ireland champions and a policy to try and deal with Stephen Cluxton coming down the road. But that's a bit of a journey ahead. Right now, they're more concerned with Cork. Rory D. I like the shape of this guy, he's uh, willing to run at the Kerry defence, sometimes he shows too much of it like there, and Kerry can move that swiftly back. Michal Burns, David Moore, there's only one man up front, and here he is, James Adunno. Down inside is David Clifford, so too is Michal Burns, it's three against one, but the one is so vital, Aidan Walsh from Kentuck. Giving it for Sean White. Connie Kilty. Left corner back, Kevin Flahav. Just uh, some statistical information. Cork haven't scored for 10 minutes now. And Kerry, you feel the pendulum is just beginning to swing their way. They've settled a little bit. Cork intensity has dropped. Gone forward again is Paul Murphy. Gone for the return pass. He gets it. Comes back outside, calling for this James O'Donoghue. David Moran is also there, if he needs him. Back to the conductor of the orchestra. James O'Donoghue, in towards Paul Ganey. Here we go, and across the face of the goal and over the bar, more importantly. For Paul Ganey's second point of the game. Yes, there's so many options, Marty. They're playing it long, they're playing it short. That time, great uh, ball from Ganey, uh, you know, over the bar. But it's just the quality of their movement, the way they're able to kind of interchange positions, get into dangerous situations, and the efficiency of their uh, of their finishing is is just wonderful at the moment. But at defence, I think sometimes we ignore the quality of the they carry defence. They are so tight at the moment. Crowley, in particular, has now tightened up on Mark Collins, and as a consequence, the source has has, has finished into the court power line. Just to confirm that James Lockery is on. He's come out of corner back instead of Sam Ryan, former Antrim footballer, playing with Mallow. As Kerry go into the attack, and that's over the bar. And it's Paul Murphy's second point. Not alone. So the opposition have to deal with the six carry forwards, but you have also have to deal with Paul Murphy coming all the way from Ratmore. Yeah, Paul Murphy is playing left half back rather than he, he has switched over to the far wing, and from that area, he's able to get on, the, on his foot uh, and get forward and cause havoc. Breaking ball picked up by Mark Collins, who's now operating on the 40, in towards Luke Connolly, who we've seen very little of. And he's the main scoring threat up front for Cork. He needs quality ball. It hasn't been delivered so far. This is Jason Foley, the right corner back from Bally Dunahoo. Produced to great footballers in the past like Robert Bunyan. Captain of the Kerry Minor team back in the 70s. And away comes Jack Barrett. Another good footballer. And it's still Jack Barrett. Heading towards the 20. 
fouled as he was going through. Now the question is, what will be the colour of the card here? Well, I felt in that case here that Jack Barry went right into the Cork centre-back, I think it was, into, into uh, Stephen Cronin, and maybe the free should have gone the other way. I thought he barged right through him. I didn't think he tried to get around him. I felt myself he was running on the road at the time, and maybe the free should have gone the other way. Here's Sean O'Shea, going to take this free. 2016 All-Ireland winning minor captain. Should be a simple tap over the bar, and that's exactly what it is. Second point of the game for him. Kerry now have scored seven points in a row without reply, which must be concern for Ronan McCarthy. Yes, and the other, th the other thing I think that Kerry have done, they have put Peter Crowley out from fullback to left halfback to actually curb the influence of Rory Dean. Long kick out's not really working to Cork's advantage. Breaking ball. Kerry being clever, knocking it down. Here's David Clifford onto the left boot. Here we go. Straight between the post and over the bar. Second point of the game for the man from Fossett, just outside Killarney. This is quality ball, turns and curls it in beautifully. Yeah, but their ability, Marty, to manufacture space for themselves, just magnificent. The short kick out is causing problems for Cork. And the referee is having a word with Stephen O'Brien. He's putting his arms out, that's what he was saying, that he wasn't really fouling James Lockery, but meanwhile, Kieran Brannigan is going to show a black card. Second black card of the match. Yeah, I think he was deliberately preventing him actually from going for the ball. Just watch it here. He just comes around him, takes him down, and that basically is a, is a black card offence. Absolutely. Referee is correct. So Cork now will have to uh, rebuild. They've lost the momentum in the last uh, 10 15 minutes. 13 points to 7 right now. Sean White laying it off as John O'Rourke. Easily intercepted by Jack Barry, who knew what was going to happen. Recycling it is Paul Ganey. Sean O'Shea. Waiting for the arrival of Michal Burns on his shoulder, and Kerry can equally recycle the ball and come back out to the middle of the field. David Bourne, testing ball for the keeper. Mark White as well, picked up by Kevin Crowley. And once again, Cork will come forward with John O'Rourke. Carberry Rangers man, they won the Cork Senior Championship a few seasons ago with a wonderful display of football and their manager was Ronan McCarthy, cousin Cork manager. But there is a connection there with West Cork. Well, that time Aidan Walsh went through trying to inspire the guys in front of him, trying to make opens for the guys in front of him, and it actually was Ian Maguire. Uh, but up front, there is not enough movement from the Cork inside line. Carrier going to introduce Kevin McCarthy uh, for Stephen O'Brien, who scored that cracking goal. Kevin McCarthy is on as we look at John O'Rourke loading this one in the goalkeeper decides to come up his line gets the touch and the kingdom come away with it David Moore David Clifford and John has his flag up he did his best to keep it in no argument from the 19 year old Ian McGuire, captain of this Cork side. Willing to run at this Kerry team, runs into trouble. In comes John O'Rourke to lend assistance. Kerry doing the hard work, the passing by Cork. Standard just has dropped just a little bit, but it's, a lot of it has to do with the pressure from Kerry. They're not allowing Cork to 
dwell on the ball at all, Mark. Yes, very much so. And the intensity of their tackling and their ability to get numbers around every core player is coming forward is is really worthwhile and very impressive. Mark Collins gets it for Sean White. Back again for Collins. Tenacious defending by Kerry. They're doing the hard work. And all along can play the flamboyant football up front when required, but this is all part of the game as well. Full credit to Tyke Morley. Temple Nomad. Made his championship debut two years ago against Clan. Turnovers, just uh, some in further information. Part 5, carry 11. As the carry lads go back into the attack. Peter Crowley looking around. Cork are back there in numbers, so they have to wait for the arrival from the midfield area. The speed and intensity has just dropped a little bit. And that's understandable in this heat. Over Carring, says the referee. And likewise, while I was praising the Kerry defence a moment ago, plaudits as well to the Cork uh, fan. Yeah, but the Kerry, the shape of the Kerry forward line has actually just gone awry somewhat at the moment. They're not getting the width of their, in their attack, and they're actually being easily closed down now by the Cork defenders. Ian Maguire is fouled. Aidan Walsh is looking at his options, and there aren't too many, I'm afraid. Young Football of the Year, eight years ago, and twice an All-Star. Kerry turn it over. Lovely skill by James O'Donoghue. Larney Legion man. It's an easy ball from Mark White. Stephen Cronin makes himself available. Plenty of Cork jerseys around. One of them belongs to Sean White. Again, the pressure comes. But really, Cork should be doing a little bit better because there wasn't great pressure at the time. Another ball lobbed in and an easy ball again from Mark White. Which is a bit surprising. That's not normal service by the Kerry attack. Yeah, that's very wasteful to Kerry. Two attacks there. They've had two good opportunities and points and both spurned. We're on the 29th minute. Cork haven't scored since the ninth minute. 20 minutes without a score. And that pendulum of dominance swinging, I would suggest, Martin, very much in Kerry's favour right now. Uh, very much so. That aggression and that defiance that we saw early on from Cork is gone, but that is because Kerry have upped their, uh, up their work rate considerably since the first 10 minutes. Better from Cork. Good defending. Tomas Clancy is available if required, but uh, it's Clancy that has it eventually. Gets by the first challenge. Coming through the middle. Ian Maguire on fire is John O'Rourke. Luke Connolly has scored a point in the opening half. He's going for it here. Loops the goalkeeper across. The chance here for Mark Collins. Tries to jig left and right. Will he be satisfied with a point? He'll be disappointed with nothing. Well, that's a big opportunity spurned that time by Cork. Connolly going through from one side. I thought he was going to go for a goal for a moment. He was in two minds. And then when it came across, actually, to Mark Collins, came off the bar. Mark Collins probably didn't... He was in two minds, really. He wasn't decisive enough when the opportunity arose and made a mess of it as a consequence. But there are signs, though, Mark, that when Cork get the ball up to their forwards, particularly their inner line... Yeah. When you run a carry, they, they look a little bit exposed. Yes, but particularly down the side of Weirong, down this side of the yeah. field, on the left flank of the field, they're doing well down this side. Like now, with Aidan Watch, to Rory Dean. Tends to goes right, goes left. Lays it off. The referee says there was a follow-through by the Bantry Blues man. And the free is given to Kerry. Referee also wants to have a word with Rory Dean. Let's yeah. see what happened here. Rory Dean let the ball off that time uh, to his wing forward, I think, uh, to his corner forward. But that time he uh, just a collision between the two of them. Now maybe the angle that we that the referees uh, uh, seen is different. Now to me that wasn't a black card offence. I didn't think that was a black card. Maybe a yellow card of anything. But it is a physical game. I didn't think there was anything deliberate in what he did that time. I think that's a harsh call. 
Well, let's look at it from this angle here, because I would agree with you initially. Let's see there. Oh, he ran into him, but there is nothing untoward about that. That did well, not that deserve a black card. would suggest that his momentum just Mental carried him it, through. It carried him into him. No, that was a harsh call by the referee, I think, and a wrong call. Black cards tally is increasing, and he is a huge loss, oh, because he was playing well on the ball, running at the... About running at the carry defence and certainly was a creator. He's a great opening 10 minutes in particular and in fact every, every time the ball has come down this left flank of the pitch, uh, you know it, the Cork are attacking, they've done well here, but in that case I think Rory Dean's momentum carried him into the uh, carry defender and basically uh, Jason Foley fair enough went down but I didn't think it was a black card offence or in fact even a card offence. You know, the funny thing is, man, when you go to club games around the country, you hardly see, in fact, you never see a black card, hardly. But yet, it's becoming a talking point here now in the opening uh, 35 minutes. It's Tide Morley. Laying it back. Kerry again, retained the possession with Morley. David Borden goes into a centre half back position. Paul Murphy given a lot of latitude, a lot of space to go forward. Jack Barry shows nice pace, willing to challenge, goes forward. The last time he did that, now he got a free, this time he didn't. Apparently you thought he was barging the last time, but uh, lovely scale. And the court defence doing well. It's great defending that time by Jamie O'Sullivan. Played the ball expertly, beautiful, beautiful piece of dispossession. And Maguire lays it off, and Cork now counter attack. Minute and a half or thereabouts left in this opening 35 minutes of the Munster final. And John O'Rourke and Kevin O'Driscoll. They keep ball, the pass across the field is not a good one, but luckily enough from a Cork perspective, it's the most Clancy. Willing to run a carry again. Still the most Clancy has to release it. Under severe pressure is John O'Rourke. Flicks it back by his Aidan Walsh. Great pressure by Kerry, forcing the Cork half forward line and midfield back into their own half. There was a pull down there. Referee says advantage in his arm up. Backing hard is Luke Connolly, but Paul Murphy is there to back him up and turn defence into attack for the Kingdom. Yeah, there's no consistency in the referee's decisions that time. I felt myself that was a free in for Cork, not given. David. Clifford is running at the court defence, still going strong. Made the 20 metre line, laying it back. Difficult enough angle, and the umpire is going for the flag and raising it. What a point, Paul Ganey. Brilliant, brilliant score. Well, that's a beautiful score by Paul Ganey that time. The donkey work and fairness done by David Clifford won the ball very well, but stood a couple of hard challenges. Ganey's angle of running, excellent, and just beautifully stroked it over the bar. But just on the other side of the pitch, Cork are not managing just to penetrate the Kerry forward line in particular, or the Kerry defence in particular, when they go down the middle. Paul Kerrigan is back, picked up a hand injury in the All-Ireland Club semi-final against uh, Schlock Neal. Had an operation after the All-Ireland Club final, only recovering, really, and is on his way back. Good to see him here. Yeah, so the, I suppose the most damning statistic about Cork at the moment, they haven't scored since the ninth minute, Marty. There's two goals and a point to 1-3 after about nine minutes or so. Cork haven't scored since then. As your television screen is indicating our graphic, there's going to be at least an extra three minutes. And Cork come good just before the stroke of half-time. It's a long time not to uh, score, my word. The ninth minute. Yes, well, 27 I minutes. Yeah, but I think so actually, score. in fairness to the Kerry defence, what is happening with Paul Morphy? Paul Morphy is getting forward a lot, but he's also acting as sweeper and doing it very effectively, covering the spaces very, very, very Kevin bad. Crowley dropping this in. Easy ball for Shane Murphy. Kerry captain. Wearing the captain's armband instead of uh, Fionn Fitzgerald. He's not actually on the uh, first 26. Michal Burns. Just couldn't quite control it. There's a bit of a cork sandwich there. And the referee gives free for a pickup off the ground. So Cork still have something to offer here, perhaps. Still have uh, Balpot. Well, just over a minute left in this first period. 
Good work here by Sean White. Paul Kerrigan. Back over for Ian Maguire. Trying to create an opportunity for Sean White. Nobody readily available. Caught being forced back. Ball is dropped in towards Ian Maguire, who got a touch. The umpire is going to signal a white. It was a hesitation, but he had a brief little nod and a wink, I think, with his fellow uh, colleague there. And let's see what happened here. Well, as far as I can see, the court defender actually did put it out that time. I felt myself it, um, it ought to have been, I think, a 45. And the umpire... Uh, had a quick look at his umpire, but he was happy enough to wave the ball wide. For Rona McCarthy, the opening 10 minutes was really top-notch, but now he has serious dilemma when Kerry have taken over. That's the scoreline of 1-11 to 2-1. Yeah, but the aggression of the Kerry team through that half is really what's there, apart from the quality and the interplay of the ball. Attack. Well, we had an exhilarating opening 12 minutes or so with some wonderful scores. Jamie O'Sullivan got a goal. Mark Collins got a goal for Cork. They were the two goal scorers. Stephen O'Brien got a goal for Kerry. Uh, and then, of course, there were three black cards. First to uh, Sam Ryan, then Stephen O'Brien, and then ultimately to Rory D. At halftime, in sunny, warm Parky Creek on the banks of the league, here's the scoreline. Cork, two goals and a point. Kerry, one goal and 11. Plenty to talk about. Don't go away. better when you've all the facts. We are halfway through the 2018 Monster Football Final and it is Kerry who have the advantage. They lead Cork by one goal and 11 points to two goals and a point. Cork cracked in two early goals but it is of course Kerry who have been knocking over the points for most of that half. Enjoyable first half, lads, but there is a seven-point gap between the two of them at the end of it. Yeah, Michael, there's a huge gulf in class, I think, out there. Um, we've seen this is a relatively new Kerry team, but this is a serious Kerry team that's going to be around for a long while. And if you're a Kerry supporter, you're usually optimistic about what you've seen out there. Mm. Cork got the perfect start, you know, to get the two early goals, but... Kerry tactically have, have dominated the game. They've totally squeezed up on the Cork kick-out. They've committed 12 men forward. Cork don't know what to do. Uh, they've won nine, nine, nine of, Cork have only won nine of their 16 kick-outs. Yeah. So they're getting a platform in that middle. And Cork have no attacking plan up front. Mm. Nothing. So for the last 20, 25 minutes, Kerry have just totally controlled yeah. that game. It's a throwback game, Michael. We're watching, it's like something in the 80s or 90s yeah. whereby... Both teams are going man for man, and it's admirable, uh, admirable yeah, yeah. That, that Cork is doing yeah. that. But Cork are only going to lose by doing that. Unfortunately, know, in, in, yeah. in, in, in an era we talk about systems and defences, uh, Cork are going man for man, and you say, yeah, that's brilliant, and it's great to watch that first 10 minutes. was exciting. Cork got the goals. We thought we were in for a spectacle. But the reality was when the game settled down and Kerry started to get one-on-one, -on -one, Gainey, yeah. Clifford, Sean O'Shea really, yeah, yeah. really made hay, and sure. it's only going to suit Kerry. We did think from those early two goals that we might have a situation where Cork were going to really rattle Kerry because they were, they were well, well taken that, that goals, was, although a, they weren't great was, defensively. That was the start they, they needed. And, yeah. You know, the biggest question mark is still over Kerry's defence, but they have enough quality up front to back themselves. And this comes from the direct ball, great take by Rory Dean, and Jamie O'Sullivan is after drifting into that position. But you can see the, see the run here from Jamie O'Sullivan. Where do you put yourself in a situation like this when a long ball goes in? You get in there, you get in on the edge of the square. Rory Dean takes it and he arrives in the perfect position to bat it into the net. So it was the perfect start. Again, you know, long ball in. This is, this is, this you can see the mismatch yeah. there, Paul mm. Murphy inside, yeah, yeah. and you have to you have to admire the cork spotted that. Yeah. And, this is the second goal, and time. this is where the week when 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 Kerry are run at again. Dean takes it down the left flank, and he goes direct. Poor Kerry, poor defensively here, opens up for him, and ball across. Uh, Collins in the back of the net. You know, Kerry have left 
Um, Tyke Morley back there and Jason Foley back there and they've done relatively well but they'll still be annoyed to concede two goals it gave Cork that platform at the start of the game but as I said Michael they're, they're, they're willing to back themselves at the other mm. end of the pitch they're kind of saying right we'll, we'll go two on two back here yeah. and we're going to squeeze the life out of you and Cork, Cork try a running game through the middle they've been trying to run it through the middle because the movement inside hasn't been good enough yeah. And Kerry are very smart where they, where they implement their fouls as well. They slow the game down around the middle of the park and that lets them reset and get back. So tactically, I think they've been much better because even on their own kickouts, they've gone short all the time. So Cork have never had a chance to pin them in this half sure, of the field yeah. for any period of time. So they're, they're totally controlling the game. And, they're, and they're, the class that they have in the forward line is just too good. Speaking of the forwards, they got a cracking goal, Kerry. They did. They didn't panic. You, you yeah. could see Cork, Cork had their tails up, but you could see Kerry feeling their way into the game. And, and you could see that they started to dominate around midfield. David Moore, I think, got his hand in this. Stephen O'Brien, a very direct runner, probably faster carrying the ball than he is without it. And you could see there the Bang. amazing finish. The one, the one thing I want to highlight with this goal was you can see the, the Cork defender and, and, and he's following his man, his man for man, but he's got to spot that danger. He's got to spot that, that Stephen O'Brien has a step. On his, uh, on his man and Stephen O'Brien burned down in goal with space inside there's only going to be one outcome a, a little bit tactically naive from Cork and, and, and that really sprung Kerry into life again good goal you have to say that about it after all that okay we have a break coming up shortly here on the programme but just before we go to that there is a chance for you to enter our big competition because we might be sending you to this year's All-Ireland Football Final We've teamed up with Sure, official statistics partner of the GAA, to give you the chance to win a trip to one of the biggest weekends in sport, the All-Ireland Football Final. This great prize for you and a friend includes a two-night, four-star break in Dublin on the All-Ireland Final weekend this September and €1,000 spending money to make it a trip to remember. For your chance to win, answer this. Which county won the 2017 All-Ireland Football Final? Was it Mayo, Kerry or Dublin? To enter, call 15 17 71 71 82 or text the word GAME followed by your answer and name to 57001. Calls from the Air Network will cost €2.03. Calls from other networks may be higher. Viewers of the North can also text to 57001 or call the number on screen. You must be over 18 to enter. Lines will close at midday on Monday, June 25th. Full details are on rte.ie forward slash competitions where the lucky winner will also be revealed. Super Valley will donate 2.6 million euro to GAA clubs. Proud sponsor of the Senior Football Championship. Welcome back again. Now let me just mention to you, if you have done the weekend lotto, tonight's draw is over on RT2 television very shortly. And a reminder of the halftime score here at Parky Cleeve, Kerry leading Cork by one goal and 11 points to two goals and a point. Three black cards, gentlemen, in that first half. They were talking points. Um, Martin and Marty were talking about them in the commentary. Yeah, it just isn't really good enough that players are going to miss out on, on playing the vast majority of the Munster final because Here was the of, first of one, this the cor corner Yeah, this now, was Sam Ryan. That's a rugby tackle, come on. I, I, I don't think it is, Michael, and I, I would know what a rugby tackle looks like. Um, I, I, I do believe Sam was uh, on the wrong side there, but he didn't intentionally pull him down. That was a rugby tackle. Now, that was, that was silly from Stephen O'Brien. You know, there was no mm -hmm. risk or, of danger there. I don't think he need to do it. It started the game really well. I, I don't think I think that was a black card. I think, but I think this one is. This it, one. I think it's particularly harsh because Rory Dean is actually one of the better Cork forwards, and I, I think his momentum here, you know, he, he has his back turned. I, I think it's. I think that's very very harsh, and he's a he's, he's a big loss. He's a big loss. He, sure. he set up. He, he set up two goals, and there was nothing he could do about that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kieran Brannigan okay. has, has got two two big calls wrong there. Kerry, you're back out in the field, lads. What have Cork got to do to get themselves back into this? Seven points down. I think a miracle, Michael. Um, I, I, they have to get some sort of forward plan in place. Luke Connolly has to get into the game. We'll probably see Brian Hurley, Colm O'Neill. They have to bring on a few forwards to try and create a bit of danger, get ball in quicker, rather than try and run it through the Kerry, you know, block across the middle of the park. But the class that Kerry have is just... They, Kerry, I know. Kerry are just going to... If Kerry kicked the first two, two three points, this could... Yeah. The, the, the danger is, Michael, if, if Cork go out and chase this, this could be a turkey shoot. Yeah. yeah. 
Mind you, Cork will have, I know it's not a big factor, but they will have a breeze in their favour in that second half. It doesn't seem to be over, overly significant. Mm. I, I hope it is. I, I, I would like to see Cork yeah. get, get back fairly quickly here, but it looks fairly on, ominous at this stage. Sub on the Kerry team, as you can see. So let's go back to Marty Morrissey and Martin Carney. Thank you very much, Michael. Just uh, confirming that Darren O'Sullivan is on for Kerry. For the and the player that's gone off this is Michal Burns. And uh, change in the Cork uh, lineup as well. That looks like... Uh, Brian Hurley that's on as well as uh, Peter Keller. Peter Keller from Kilmichael. Is, we'll firm that uh, in a moment, but we'll just see that Brian Hurley and Peter Keller who are uh, really good footballers, both of them coming back, uh, Brian Hurley in particular, coming back from injury. So here we go. Second half is on the way. Cork haven't scored since the ninth minute of the first half. Can they do better in the second? Kerry scores eight points without reply. So the start of this second half is crucial. James O'Donoghue flicking one over. The Cork uh, defence. Kevin McCarthy is there. An unfortunate and timely slip and out over the sideline. Line ball for Kerry. For a call. Yeah, clever play that time from Darren O'Sullivan. Kind of played the ball into the stomach of his Cork defender and got a uh, free kick or sideline ball as a consequence. Good work here by Sean O'Shea. Making a little bit of space. Back for is Kevin McCarthy running at the court defence. McCarthy will look around and see who's available. And it happens to be James O'Donoghue. They're doing a lot of slipping and sliding down that uh, left wing. And away goes Kevin McCarthy. Skipping inside the cover. Good ball inside. There's an opportunity. Dummy to the right. Hits with the left. Back of the net. Beautiful to watch. Just watch the hip movement. The skill and the balance and the finish was simply sublime. Kevin McCarthy created it, ball comes in, little dummy, and bang, back of the net. Beautiful from as, Paul Ganey. As you said, the composure of Ganey when he got the ball that time, the little hip swivel and the left foot a kick into the corner. But the variation that Kerry are showing in the attack is just delightful. But the space the court defence are giving them is just criminal. Beautiful catch by David Bourne. Know that his dad, Ogie Moran, is watching and is... Uh, here at Parky Cave and away come Kerry again. Cork are in deep trouble. Ball comes back outside. There's David Clifford left, right, oh, outside the post. It's 45. I think it came off a Cork defender, but that time again, Marty, I'm talking about the space the Cork defence are given the Kerry attack. Kerry's movement, admittedly, is wonderful, but just watch this time. That ball just came off the Cork defender and out for a 45. But that was another goal chance. Well, Eamon Fitzmaurice is rebuilding. Re-energising this Kerry team is getting more impressive as we watch it live. Liam Hassan is back there. Serious concern for Rona McCarthy. That scoreboard doesn't look good now. 2-11 to 2-1. And it's not the start that his side wanted. But the, you just sense, Martin Carney, that when the ball goes in to that pick, take or pick, there's so many of them. Clifford, Gainey, I don't know. Yes, and it's too late to, ch to turn the tide at this stage. But from the beginning, maybe Cork would have been far better, uh, you know, had they put a sweeper in there. Here comes Sean O'Shea. And the white flag will be raised for his third point of the game. And his second from a free. 11 points between them and just two minutes gone in the second half. When you think of the exhilarating opening nine, ten minutes we had from Cork, and they still haven't scored beyond the ninth minute, in case you've just joined us here. And the journey back looks even more difficult than what it was at half-time. Yeah, I think Cork created a little bit of a mirage at that stage, but they haven't, they haven't, from that, they haven't built from there or pushed on from there. It's a bit of a struggle, but David Moran gets it out for his Paul Ganey. Good defending by James Lockbury. Goes into a curry cul-de-sac. Referee Kieran Brannigan eventually blows the Swiss up. Yeah, but the thing of it, that's a very young Kerry team. But their exuberance and their willingness to work for one another is so impressive. And you just sense that we're seeing the beginning of a group of players here that we're going to see a lot of over the next number of years. Eamon Morris, I think we're going to see a lot of Eamon as well. His sixth championship campaign, appointed to principal of. Trouble Skilkura Gwina in uh, Dingle, which uh, would be further responsibility for Mr. Fitzmaurice. Beautiful school in West Kerry. South Kerry is represented here by Sean O'Shea. Yeah. 
Lorden to the right of the Polson line. Well, the Kerry people know their football, and I can assure you, I think as Kieran Whelan was saying at half-time, they'll be happy enough. Oh, they'll be delighted with this. They'll be delighted with what they're seeing today. And again, from a group that are so young, they're so enthusiastic, their ability to play coordinated football, find one another, is so impressive. Tag Morley. Over for us, Gavin White. One of the Dr. Crooks boys on the team of Ireland club medal from last year. Spraying it wide. James O'Donoghue sending it back in around the house. Chasing after this is Sean White. Ball to the ground. By centre half forward, Sean O'Shea. That seemed deliberate to me, Mark. Well, that was deliberate. If, you know, that, that to me was a black card offence also. You know, the ones in the first half where there was another one that was a black card offence. That was a pull down, deliberate pull down. Should have got a black card. Tomas Clancy pulls the brakes and uh, is immediately swamped. James O'Donoghue is in there. The referee blows the whistle. Yeah, t touch, uh, touch on the ground, but... Uh, uh, Kerry are so composed when they get the ball, the movement is just outstanding. Let's just watch this again. No, I don't think that's a black card. In fairness, they, I, I have to go back on that, Sean. White that time was slipping in the process of turning, and I don't think, in fairness, that was a black card. Yeah, and when you look at the replay, yeah. the referee on this occasion was correct. Luke Connell. Look where he is, deep inside his own half back line. And he's one of the major scoring threats up front. Yes, and just look at the other side of the field, the way at the moment Paul Murphy is covering off, just covering the space in front of the Cork full forward line. Paul Kerrigan will run at this Kerry defence, brought to the ground, and responding to uh, the challenge from Gavin White, who stands his ground equally. And this is going to be a free for Cork, the referee. It's a free for Cork and it's going to be a card again. Which colour, I don't know. But just watch it. He tries to go inside here and he's taken down. No card being shown. Well, you see, the referee at the beginning set a standard by issuing black cards from an early stage. Now he seems to have actually gone back on the way, on, you know, on what, the way he refereed the game early on. In fairness, I don't think there was a black card involved in that, but maybe there was, should have been a yellow card issued. Luke Connell. Going to take this. Moved out from top of the left to the half forward line. Scored 10 points against Tipperary. Yeah, but just look at the cork attack. Every single cork forward is standing beside his man. They're not offering the uh, you look Connolly any option whatsoever. Not good, I'm afraid. But your point is well made, Martin, because. There was no bit of dash, no bit of exuberance from the Cork attack. When you compare with what they produced in the opening nine minutes, I know I keep saying it, but it is nine minutes. And that was uh, when they scored the two goals and a point. Meanwhile, Kerry are on the ball and away they go. This is Darren O'Sullivan, former All-Ireland winning captain. Back to Paul Murphy. And Cork are... Tactics have changed. They're falling back now rather than tackling when they were in the first half. But they were tackling the man in possession when he was inside his own half of the field. Here's Paul Ganey, just, just to the left of the post and wide. But Martin, the body language, and we're up here on whatever floor this is, which is part of the seventh floor, but the body language co from, coming from Cork is a team that's already defeated. Uh, very much so, and the influential cohort that they have are really not delivering. You know, we expect a lot from Aidan Watch, we expect a lot from Ian Maguire, but they're just not getting to the pitch of the game whatsoever, and they're chasing shadows, in all fairness at the moment, all over the field. Kick out going over the sideline, doesn't have the confidence. David Clifford. Laying it off. James O'Donoghue. Up for Sean O'Shea. Gavin White is coming to stand side. Jason Foley, he's the right corner back. Darren O'Sullivan on 22. That'll be a huge disappointment for him. 
you know, his finishing betrayed him that time, but the options that Kerry have available to them just all over the pitch, you know, it's an embarrassment in many ways. Like Cork are not able to follow their men, they're unwilling to follow their men, they're not aggressive enough in the tackle, they're not getting first to the ball, Marty, in any sector of the field at the moment. Again, Mark White goes long, picked up by Luke Connell. Going forward is Ian Maguire. Pushed as he was going forward, the referee is getting a few words from the court captain because I think they felt that advantage should have been given, but just watch this here. It was a push. That was it a push a in free. the back by Tyke Morley. Yeah, it's a free in straight in front. Should give Cork their opportunity to get their second point of the match. Luke Connolly. Just to the left of the post. And Cork are back on the scoreboard. 45 minutes played. 10 minutes into the second half. That's their first score since the ninth minute. You don't win games, whether it is Junior B or Senior Munster German your finals with that sort of a scoring average, Martin. No, and maybe, you know, the, the, there was a sign there, maybe if they run hard at the centre of the Kerry defence, they might get a little bit of joy. But that's what they were doing in the first, in the first 10 half. minutes. Yeah. But I think in particular, Marty, when they ran down the left flank here in the first half, they had a lot of joy, but that's that was where, all dried up. And that's where Rory Dean is such a loss. As uh, Darren O'Sullivan lays it off, and uh, there's more trouble here. Kirk all good save, Mark White. The Kerry man went for the glory. Now, the Cork crowd get behind their team. Here comes Paul Kerrigan. Luke Connolly is available, so too is Ian McGuire. Thought about giving it, decided not to. Gives it instead for his Mark Collins. Back again for his Paul Kerrigan. Kerry up back, retreated at this stage, and by the time they get around to uh, getting near the goalpost, Kerry will have it well, well protected. Here comes, coming forward is James Lockwood, former Antrim footballer, trying to get inside the cover. Stopped by Tide Morley. But this is a little bit better. There's a bit of dash, not much of it, much of a dash, but there's a little bit more from Cork. A little bit more, but there was a really admirable piece of defending a couple of moments ago by David Bourne, the way he tracked back Paul Kerrigan and managed to dispossess him and turn the ball over. Jamie O'Sullivan got a touch. Paul Ganey was being a little bit uh, too fancy. That's a sideline ball for Kerry. Yeah, well, maybe David Moore didn't actually dispossess him. The dis dispossession came a moment later. Great shot by Peter Crowley, good save by Mark White. <laughs> Referee, blowing his whistle, but I'm not too sure what the decision is. Yes, it is a free. Paul Murphy going to take it. But I think Paul Murphy asked for that free, and the referee eventually decided to give it to him. Paul Murphy gives it away so easily. Very unusual. Now, can Cork make the maximum use out of that mistake? Good defending, Jason Foley. The Cork still have the ball. In the centre is Zayden Walsh. Coming over this side is Paul Kerrigan. Walsh decided to hold on to it. Cork delaying it. They need to be faster, more incisive. Ian Maguire is aware of it. Gives it into the centre as Cork seeks scores. Look at that. One, two, three Kerry defenders back there. Who has it now? And the referee eventually blows the whistle. Yep. Ian Maguire... It's a and perhaps there's a bit of passion overflowing here. And maybe uh, the referee is going to have to take control of this because this wasn't uh, quite expected because it's been played. It's in a very it's good 15 now. minute, yeah. Well, I think referees have been told this year if there's a third man into a melee like that, the third man is the one that will actually be kind of singled out. This is what happened here as uh, Cork went forward. Right, Brian Hurley. Brian Hurley, yes. A good defending, as you said, Marty, by Cork defence. Now, at that time, I think it was the, uh, Maguire, was it? Yes. Ian Maguire, yes. Ian Maguire got the ball, again fouled. And what people then started wading in. I think Tom Clancy gets involved in it. Uh, uh, Jack Barry's involved. And I think maybe the referee is going to certainly have to issue a couple of yellow cards here. fairness it's all unsavory and it's all kind of maybe untidy there was no belts or anything thrown there unnecessary unnecessary yeah yeah but what it is showing at least with Cork they're starting to get passionate about it and they've had a couple of attacks here in the last couple of moments through the middle that has that have actually yielded something 
No, this is where the video referee would be a great help, wouldn't it? <laughs> it's working well at times in the World Cup. Maybe that's what we need. Yeah, far by the lead. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a deep conversation. Referee Kieran Brannigan has now made a decision. Yeah, I said it'll be yellow cards issued. I don't think there was a red card offence, and there was nobody who went and actually struck a box, as far as I could see. It was untidy, it was unsavoury, but... Again, the referee ought to be a little bit more decisive. Nobody knows exactly who he wants to actually kind of call over. Mark Collins has uh, gone to the referee now. Uh, also wants to have a word, I think, with Jason Foley. Jason Foley. So, what's it going to be? Two names have been written in, and it's a yellow for the two players. Yeah, that's about right. A yellow card for Jason Foley and for Mark Collins. I think that's the right decision. But now he's going to throw up the ball between two because he feels that when he had given the free in for court, the court players reacted, and so he's going to throw it up now. And again, there is this delay unnecessarily. Like, why doesn't he just throw the ball up? And he's supposed to throw it up between two, but there's men, there's, they're like rotten stacks. Brian Hurley and Green would hear it here, and they also should get a yellow card. And this is crazy stuff altogether. I mean, look at... Did somebody tell the referee to throw the ball up between the two, between David Bourne and Peter Kelleher? Great catch. David Bourne. Now, that was a throw. But he got away with it. Out for Peter Crowley. And to be fair, it's quite uh, evident that these players want to play football. Like this fella, Gavin White. What a run by the Dr. Coxland. Quick ball inside. Out for us, David Clifford, lobbing it in, the goalkeeper gets a touch. It's still alive, back outside, and that's gone over the bar. Good score, James O'Donoghue. Uh, James O'Donoghue, great carry score, but you've got to hand it to Gavin White that time. He left, it, he left an acre of space between him and his pursuers as he ran from his own 45-metre line, eventually set the score up, and O'Donoghue did the rest. Kick out from Mark White. Loose breaking goal always seems to be snapped up by Kerry. There's a little bit of holding and there's a fray for the kingdom. David Moore sends it down towards David Clifford. Willing to run at this court defence, still Clifford. Loading this one in, goalkeeper Mark White gathers it second time round. Free in the, for the keeper, Paul Ganey was fouling. Yeah, even Fitzmaurice will be a bit disappointed with the shot selection that time from Clifford. A little bit of a difficult angle, a bit far out, maybe should have played it in that bit quicker. But it's my first time seeing him play at senior football. He's a big lad, well able to get the ball, but sometimes his finishing from distance isn't up to a par yet. Sean White taking responsibility. He fouled the ball there, I would suggest. Referee didn't see that, and meanwhile, it's Kerry to have the advantage with David Moore. First his midfield partner, Jack Barry. UCD student runs into a Clark cul-de-sac there's a pull down there and that's going to be a free for Clark yeah I think let me just see like going forward with the ball I think Sean White a couple of moments ago might have found the ball going forward but nonetheless Kerry intercepted it had a counter attack from there Yes, yeah, definitely over over carry the ball. Mark Griffin is on. Full back for a number of seasons. And he replaces uh, the yellow card at Jason Foley. So Eamon Fismar is taking no chances, making sure that he'll have a full squad. Here come Paul. Mark Collins. Plenty of green and gold jerseys. Green of Bjorgliak, very much involved, and gets it out for his Jack Barry.
You can play it long or they can play it short, Kerry. Take your pick. David Clifford. Still David Clifford. Being double marked at the moment. Still David Clifford. Lays it off. Paul Ganey floats it over the bar. Created by Clifford, finished by Ganey. That's a goal and four points for Paul Ganey. Yeah, just watch Clifford's work again. Great vision, ability to put the ball out to Darren Sullivan. He's crowded out by the court defence, and Ganey does the necessary once more. Such a good finisher is Ganey. Give him a little bit of a rest now. Kieran Donaghy gets a warm round of applause. 35 years of age since March. Made his debut against Cork back in 2005. And the man that's making way is David Clifford. You're going to see a lot of this young guy all through the summer. Yeah, you've been very impressed with him. He's played very well. OK, sometimes his kicking from distance hasn't been what I'd expect it to be. But his willingness to show for the ball, his willingness to play players into a, a good positions for scores, really, really top draw. Again, the loose breaking ball being picked up most of the time by Kerry, Paul Murphy, and challenged by Sean White. Kevin McCarthy coming through the middle, laying it off as James Dunham. It seems to be a slippery patch down there. James Dunham sending it across over towards. Jack Barry, nice turn. Jack Barry coming at top. It's an easy one, easily picked up by Mark Watt. 12 points between the teams. Luke Connolly inside his own 45 metre line. It seems an awful waste of a talented corner forward, and here he is again, going long. Added to. Shane Murphy has to come off his goal line and carry deal with the threat. You know, what's interesting there, like when you're talking the threats, is a quick ball went through into the court full forward line that caused a momentary panic, but in fairness, good anticipation from Shane Murphy put an end to that. Gavin White versus Kevin McCarthy. Gavin is inside him, and here's Gavin White. There's a chance here, and that is over the bar. He's a good footballer. Like David Clifford and uh, Sean O'Shea, only just starting his intercounty career, he's got a great engine and good finish. Yeah, but there's so many Kerry players at the moment willing to attack. The speed that they have is, is just so impressive. Cork are not able to stay up with them. Simple as that. Cork are bringing on Brian O'Driscoll instead of uh, Stephen Cronin. Change in the Cork defence. Brother to brother, Mark to Shaw, Flanagan Kilty combination, Paul Kerrigan giving it back for his Kevin Flav, Mark Collins, back to Mark Collins, three Kerry defenders in front of him, not much of an opportunity, Ian Maguire is coming and that is fisted over the bar, no it's not, it's gone to the left and wide. No, in fairness to Maguire, Maguire consistently has tried to get forward, tried to inspire Cork, but that time a poor option in, on his part. There was a crossfield pass that time. The first side might have actually resulted in goal. Here's a statistic for you. Cork have only managed one point in 51 minutes. That's right, they've only scored four times in the entire game. You know, that is a damning statistic if ever there was one. James O'Donoghue <coughs> making way. And coming onto the field is Barry John Keane. Yes, and on that, what you're talking about, Marty, I think the loss of Rory Dean was a big loss for Cork. He has started very well. He'd been actually instrumental in the first two goals in setting them up. And when he went off, an awful lot of the creativity that they had up front dried up. So Colm O'Neill is coming on for Aidan Walsh. We all know Colm O'Neill from winning in All-Ireland back in 2010. Man who's well capable of scoring goals, but Cork need a lot of them. It doesn't look likely at the moment. 
Well, Murphy here. Decided that that way was kind of blocked, so gives it instead to Mark Griffin. Kevin McCarthy getting by the first challenge provided by Tomas Clancy. Still Kevin McCarthy. There's trouble here for Cork Ups. Well, John Keane was trying to do fancy indeed. It needed a finish. Yeah, but that was a great save, I think, was by Mark White. The over-elaboration that time, actually, and uh, <laughs> Barry John Keane made a mess of it. Good goalkeeping. But just a number of options again that Kerry had available to them that time is embarrassing. Just their ability to run from any position on the field, draw court defenders toward them, play the, the man who's in the best position onto the ball. So impressive. Kieran Donaghy is at the edge of the square, being marked by goal scorer Jamie O'Sullivan. And this 45 going to be taken by Sean O'Shea. He scored three points in this Munster final. Two from Freeze, one from Play. Let's see what happens here. It's hit with conviction and accuracy. Can't ask for more. It's a sport. A job well done, I would say, at this stage. There's still ten minutes, but Kerry, the better team. He'll be very happy with that, even if it's Morris will be. But again, an interesting statistic about this, Marty, of the 15 players who played against Cork last year, there's only five of them started this game. 27,674 is the official attendance. Cork officials were telling me during the week they were expecting around 25. That's a good crowd. Ball comes in. Kerry deal with it once more. There's Kevin McCarthy. Good coming. Down towards Barry John Keane. Takes two Corkmen to stop him. A little jink to the right. There's nobody inside. Kieran Donaghy is waving for the long ball to be delivered. Here it comes. It's aimed at Donaghy, and it's Donaghy that grabs it, lays it off. There's a chance here. Oh, the court defence stand firm. Fabulous ball from Donaghy. Great bit of fielding, first of all, but his vision was, and, and the ways of the pass, delightful. Well, he sent a text message to Kevin McCarthy. Kevin got it, and he duly delivered a smashing ball. Nice finish of the work, but Cork defence stood up to the test. So now, Cork have about eight minutes to produce something. It's a long, long journey back. 14 points. It's very unlikely. And that's putting it mildly. Yeah, but the thing about it is it is a long journey back, but that's done in many ways to the intensity that Kerry are continuing to apply in the tackle. Paul Kerrigan, floating one in, little push in the back, spotted by the referee, as we saw it up here. Colm O'Neill was just a little bit too obvious, so it's a free for Kerry. Yeah, and I think of everything that Cork have to learn from today is that the movement of the forward line just isn't good enough to actually play against one of the top teams. Darren O'Sullivan to Gavin White. Paul Murphy started the move and it ends up with Kevin McCarthy. Cork regained the possession. Ian Maguire. Mark Collins has gone down the wing here in front of us. Paul Kerrigan goes for the Brian Hurley option. Well, I'm not too sure what Reno Bjorklerk was trying to do. But it wasn't defending, and Hurley is rather annoyed by the, the actions of his marker. Look at this. Well, they're not going to be on each other's Christmas card list, I think, any day sure. soon. They've been at each other since, since um, Hurley, by Hurley came in. They have been niggling away at one another. But Obekli's defending. He's so snappy and, and aggressive in the tackle. Killian Young is coming back from a hip injury. Good to see him back, Reynard man. And he comes on instead of Tyke Morley. I'm just thinking, Martin, if you're a part of the 26 or the extended panel, 
this is going to be a hard Kerry team to get on. Oh, well, look at we've seen. I remember 1975, a crowd of young Turks came in for Kerry and went to one eight All Ireland's after that. But this group here are capable of winning a number of All Ireland's over the next ten years. Knocked away, no major threat. Good work by Peter Crowley. David Moore. It's maybe the first kind of wavered ball that he's had all day, but your point is very well made, Marty. I mean, you know, the competition for places within the Kerry panel is of such a standard that it is, by God, it's, you earn it if you get on that first 15. Brian O'Driscoll willing to run at the Kerry defence immediately. Three defenders come across. There's a chance here that this will go between the posts and over the bar. Good score by Peter Kelleher. Came through the underage ranks. I remember seeing him at under 21 level. He was impressive and he shows his credentials here. Yeah, when you think about it this way, Marty, it's only the fifth score in the game, like an already very fast. We've a half an hour got in the second half. Five minutes to go. Shane Murphy's kick out. Another by David Moore. Kevin McCarthy's gone on an awful lot of ball marks since yeah, he was in the since, since he's come in very much so, and again, it kind of, in a sense, backs up your point. Killian Young pulls the brakes, lays it off. Barry John King, little dummy to the right. Can he control it? Here comes the cross. Just missing Kieran Donaghy, gathered instead by Mark White. The point actually, you know, about McCarthy coming on, like he, he has certainly put down the standard and said to the guy who is replaced, I'm here and I'm looking o at, over your shoulder. Ian Maguire goes for the old fashioned high dropping ball, picked up here by Gavin White. Peter Crowley just sensed that he enjoys life out around the half back line rather than the full back line, and when he gets a chance, he's going to go forward. Sean O'Shea. Back to Peter Crowley once more. They're aiming for Kieran Donaghy with another high dropping ball. Gathered. Paul Ganey. It's the time to refug a lovely ball skill. Beautiful. Barry John Keane is to his right, but he takes his point. Goal and five points. Paul Ganey has scored this afternoon in this. But this evening, I should say, in this monster final. He's been magnificent, a spearhead of the attack. Like, he can play it either way. Like, the wonderful target man all the time, showing all the time. But his ability to bring others into play, apart from his accuracy, when he gets the opportunities, marks him out as a very special forward. Even when Cork get a touch at midfield, the carry forwards or half back line, they're just snapping around. Oh, yeah, they're, they're like little terriers every, up against the Alsatians, and, every but they're, they're just gulping it up. Every breaking ball, they're showing that hunger that Cork haven't managed after you know, once you know, after the first 10 minutes, that, that drive that Cork had, that initial drive that Cork has, has disappeared. But Kelly's ability to win the breaking ball has just been manifest throughout. Luke Connolly, I'll say it again, seems an awful waste of talent to have him out in the middle of the field when you're looking for scores in around the house back outside again Shane Murphy knocking it down just full back Peter Crowley the Lone Ranger Lone Rangers man representing beautiful part of County Kerry Kilorgla Paul Murphy has shown all the credentials that made him such a wonderful footballer over the last number of years. He can defend, he can attack. Mark Griffin thinks he can do the same. Here he is. Sean O'Shea. Over towards Kevin McCarthy. Switching wings, Kieran Donaghy. Back to McCarthy. Paul Ganey is waiting for it. Little dummy to the right. What's going to happen here? It's going to roll into the back of the net. Well, it's far too easy, Martin. They're just walking through Cork at the moment. I'll tell you, they'd be looking for the final whistle to put an end to the misery. Kevin McCarthy setting it up for Paul Ganey. Just a little touch that was required. 
A remarkable two goals and five points for the full forward in this Munster final. Well, I'm not, I'm not surprised that Kerry have won this, but I didn't think they'd win it so easily. The Kingdom have set out their stall, and nationwide, I'm sure everybody is saying, watching TV in their kitchens or sitting rooms or wherever, OK, we now realise that Kerry are definitely coming with a new team. Very much so. If there was ever a case of the end of the beginning, today is one. This is some Kerry team that we're seeing in its embryonic stage. Certainly Martin Carney, from what I've seen, I think they're going to be serious contenders for the Sam Maguire at the end of August, beginning of September. Well, they're only going to improve from what we can see today, and they have so many players fighting for places. Their movement up front is excellent, but the hunger that they're displaying throughout the field is just very, very difficult to deal with. And look at this man go off. Beautiful. Great defending. Full credit. Well done. That's... Uh, Paul Kerrigan that was backtracking there, but uh, Darren O'Sullivan still has the engine. Ian Maguire, Colm O'Neill is outside him, obviously gives him the call. And Cork just floating in a ball in more hope than any confidence, but it will raise a white flag off the boot of Mark Collins, who scored a goal and a point on what has turned out to be a sunny evening in Cork, but a miserable evening for Cork football. Yeah, the golfing class has been huge throughout. Like, basically, Kerry has squeezed the life out of Cork after that early uh, period of dominance that Cork enjoyed. But there was a sense of the inevitable from maybe the midway through the first half. Peter Crowley going for Kieran Donaghy. Chasing after this with Jamie O'Sullivan. Ball is still in play. Still Kieran Donaghy. In comes Darren O'Sullivan. Was Clancy did all the hard work and away comes Ian Maguire. Paul Kerrigan looking at options, and uh, to be honest with you, he has none up front. And with the result, Gavin White does his primary job to defend, and away come the Kingdom of Kerry again. That's the point I made early on, Marty, that there's no movement up front whatsoever from the carry at, or from the Cork attack, and that has been a problem for most of the game. Barry John Keane still with possession. He's to come back outside to Jack Barry. Darren O'Sullivan is coming. Kieran Donaghy gets away from Jamie. Out first, Barry John Keane, and Mark White is there. fairness I don't think it would have made a difference to the score overall but I think the loss of uh, Rory Dean you know to a black card was a big loss to Cork he'd be very influential in the, early in the game and been involved in the two goals that they scored well they seemed to run out of diesel when he was gone to be honest with you and it was coming that left wing all the time every time that the Cork were threatening it was coming from the left wing of Rory Dean to a lesser extent uh, Luke Connolly and Mark Collins yeah but just watch the off the ball movement that carry the speed that they, uh, that they execute their plays at it's just of a different standard completely here's Barry John Keane again thinking to the left and right and happy enough to take the point and say to him and Fitzmaurice I want something to contribute, and he certainly has. Oh, Good player. Great player, and again, the mesmerising movement we're seeing from the first whistle to the last from the carry attack is a credit to them. At no stage had they dropped their intensity. The ruthlessness that is evident today will be a worry to any team in the country. Cork had two goals and a point up after nine minutes. They've only managed three points for the rest of the game. And that alone will be a staggering and frightening statistic. It's two against one. Can't blame Luke Connolly. He looks around dejected and I don't blame him. Kerry superior. Sean O'Shea back first, Paul Ganey. What I like about this Kerry team as well, Martin, is that players like Paul Ganey, who's been in at the edge of the square, comes out. I know it's to put Kieran Donnie at full forward, but he's working hard even when he doesn't have the ball. I know every one of them put in that, that hard yards from the word goal. Okay, they have class to burn and all of that. But Kevin God, McCarthy to Kieran Donnie. They want Donnie to score. And Donaghy looks to the gods and says, I needed a little bit more power. Comes back out first, Paul Kerrigan. Luke Connolly, the two Nemo Rangers boys. 50-50 balls being won by Kerry. 
And the referee, Kieran Brannigan from County Down, blows the full-time whistle. Kerry have secured their 80th Munster title with an impressive showing. It was exhilarating for all of nine or ten minutes, but at the end, Kerry took control in so many sectors. The black card loss of Rory Dwan certainly was a factor, but overall, even if Rory was there, you'd have to say that Kerry were the better team. Full-time score in Parque Cueve, Munster football final evening. Kerry, three goals, 18 points. Cork, two goals and four. What do you think of this, Mark? Well, it was a fantastic performance, first and foremost from Kerry, all over the field. And I mean, once they got on top, it's that ruthlessness that they showed, that ability to go for the juggler, and that ability of so many players to go and have big matches. Like, right throughout the field, you know, they were first to every ball. Like, their defenders were niggly, they were sharp in the tackle, they were out in front of their men. They never give the Cork defence or the Cork attack any room. David Morton was like a conductor in the middle of the field. Great, great game, I thought, throughout, and particularly in the early stages, he was so influential. But up front, they have so many possible, you know, match winners. In particular, Paul Ganey. Young Clifford, to me, is the first time I've seen him as a senior footballer. By God, he's going to kind of, you know, come into a player of real consequences years go on. But just the quality they have, the class that they have, most manifest throughout. You know, we often use the phrase, there's a mixture or a cocktail of youth and experience. But when you look at Darren O'Sullivan, All-Ireland winning captain, Kieran Donaghy, you look at Peter Crowley. I enjoyed uh, the soundbite we used in the news during the week of Paul Murphy, who said, well, I'm one of the old fellas now and I'd give him a, a run. I'd right. give a bit of uh, advice to the young guys. But, you know, it's it, what Eamon Fitzmaurice is, is composing here is a very formidable team. Oh, it is. And when you look at your Killian Young, you have Mark Griffin, you have Tom O'Sullivan, all kind of, you know, hoary chestnuts in many ways. But by God, they can play football. And they're all, they don't want to be sub smarty. They want to be on the starting 15. So as I said during commentary, you can imagine the competition there is from within the squad. Well, there's Kieran Donaghy. What a wonderful servant he is to uh, Kerry football. Loves his basketball, of course, with Tralee as well. But uh, certainly, you could see the admiration from the Kerry footballers. The minute he came in, they changed the tactics. Let the ball in Absolutely. to Donaghy. A absolutely. And no respite given to Corn from the word go. An enjoyable evening from a Kerry perspective in Parky Creeve on a beautiful sunny evening. Kerry Monster champions for the 80th time. Let's get some sideline reaction now and join my colleague, Claire McNamara. Yes, Marty, we're with uh, David Clifford. David, congratulations. Still a teenager, but you have your first Munster Senior medal now. Very, very impressive fashion tonight. Yeah, I suppose, you know, we knew coming on to the new Parky Creeve, it was going to be a tough test. And, you know, obviously we did get that, I suppose, you know. It was, um, we did prepare very well, for, we felt preparations went very well, so I suppose, you know, we were just here to put in a performance and thank God we did. It was really done and dusted by half-time, wasn't it? Those two court goals aside, you were utterly dominant. Yeah, I suppose Eamon himself probably won't be too happy with them, but, you know, it leaves us something to brush up on. But yeah, as you say, we kind of, we reacted well from the goals and we pushed on from there, so yeah. This Kerry team have really stepped it up, haven't they, this year? Is that injection of energy and pace from young guys like yourself really uh, added to that? Yeah, I suppose you could say it has. You know, I suppose the main thing there is just this massive competition. You know, you can see from the six fellas that came in, and there's probably ten more fellas sitting sitting up in the stand behind us that weren't tugged out today that, that could do the same job as we did. You know, so I suppose competition is a big thing there. There's certainly going to be competition for places now. You're into the into the Super Eights, and there's going to be a great buzz about Kerry as you go forward. Yeah, I suppose the Super Eights is going to be another tough test. You know, we're going to have to be ready for it. But as you said, it's it's great to be getting games against the tough the toughest opposition. So yeah, we're looking forward to that. now, yeah. Congratulations tonight, David. Cheers. Thanks a lot. It is one thing to come down to Cork for a Kerry team and win a Munster Championship. It's another thing to do it in the kind of impressive fashion that they've certainly done it in tonight. And the two gentlemen here with me, Sean Kavner and Kieran Whelan, I think would also agree with that Kerry were just, Kieran excellent here this evening. Yeah, poles apart, Michael. Uh, two teams, you know, Cork were, were relatively stable in the league in Division 2 and people took confidence from the performance against Tipperary where they were doing the simple things right and they worked hard but today they met a new machine uh, and a machine that has depth now and guys coming off the bench different styles of football even the, in the second half there when Donny came in they can mix it up they were totally dominant tonight defensively midfield they wiped Cork in midfield David Moran was massive and then up front they just have top class forwards and this team has emerged very, very quickly, and as we said at halftime, they're going to be 
around for a long time. It has emerged quickly, Sean. There are, as we saw, some excellent young footballers, obviously, in Kerry at the moment, looking to the future. But it's also a big help that when you're bringing on subs, you're bringing on a barrel load of all Ireland medals as well. Yeah, the young guys are putting it up to the older guys, and you can see the ball-winning capabilities of David Clifford and the pace that he has. And then all of a sudden, after 55 minutes, you introduce Star Donaghy in, and, and he brings something different to the game. I was totally impressed by what Kerry have done here this evening. Uh, they've built the team to face Dublin. That's the reality, Kerry Michael. Munster champ. We are. They, they scored 32 against Clare. They have 27 here today. That's. I don't need to be an accountant to tell you. Yeah. 59 points <laughs> in two games, and that is some shooting in any championship. Well, the Kerry captain obviously Kerry making his victory speech, and I suppose the Munster Championship Cup, one of the few cups that doesn't actually have an official name as such, except it is the Munster Championship Cup, and Kerry know it very well. And look, hopefully it's not the last time we're up here, and the supporters as well. Fair play, guys. Thanks. The supporters being thanked there, and the thing about it was, and I suppose this is the other side of life, Kieran. The Cork supporters, 15 minutes from the end of this game, they were just pouring out of this stadium, understandably. Yeah, well, it's demoralising, Michael, I suppose. When you, when you go so far behind after getting the perfect start that they got, and then the second half starts and Kerry stick the ball in the back of the net, uh, you know, and it was game over at that stage. There's a nice uh, there's, picture of Kieran Donaghy, of course, and his daughter. She looks handy enough for the football as well. You know, I tell you, Michael, she is back. <laughs> Michael, if I was Kieran Donaghy, I'd be hanging around for a few more years because with that group of players who come behind him, uh, there's a lot more success in the way. But I think that man, Shane Murphy, I think has also made a year difference. His kickouts tonight were excellent. Mm -hmm. He gives, you know, he gives them confidence at the back. He's, a, he's one of the new guys coming into the team as well. I've been very impressed with him. And this, of course, is part, obviously, Sean, of the modern game of football. Although at times, maybe more so in the first half, it was more of a traditional game of football. And you were saying at halftime, that ain't going to suit Cork. For sure, it was a throwback game. And we, we hoped that Cork would maintain that, that intensity and, and that pace. But the reality was, whenever Kerry got into their groove and whenever those forwards... The best thing about, about Kerry's forwards is that they're all very capable one-on-one -on -one of beating their man. And... and, and it's something that probably has gone out of the game in the last five or six years where we've gone into systems and modes. What Kerry has now, particularly in that quartet of Ganey, O'Donoghue, Clifford and Sean O'Shea, they have four guys who just want to take the ball and go at men all day. They, they did that today. Cork allowed them to go one-on-one -on -one, and boy, they made hay. And, and you could see the likes of you know, Clifford in particular wanted to take his man every time. And, and Ganey, that's a dream for him because he's looping around the outside. He's, he's got the balance and coordination to, to, to kick off either foot, and he really made hay. They all made hay. OK, more analysis on this evening's Monster Football Final coming up after the break. game better when you've all the facts. This year, Super Valley will donate 2.6 million euro to GAA clubs, proud sponsor of the Senior Football Championship. The Monster Football Championship trophy has been claimed for 2018 and it remains in the hands of the Kingdom. Kerry winning their sixth Monster title in a row with a 318 to 24 win over Cork. Now, more top class action for you tomorrow here on RT Television. We are on the air at 10 past one with the Ulster final from Clonus and then the Leinster final from Croke Park. In fact, we'll be starting tomorrow with a recap of tonight's qualifier action with Mr. Brolly, Spillane and O'Rourke. But tonight, the air man of the match is Kerry's Paul Ganey. He is with Claire McNamara. Paul, congratulations. Six monster, monster titles in a row in pretty ruthless fashion. 2-5 for you tonight. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice one now today, I must say. Um, 
we had superb performances all over the field. Uh, I suppose a couple of my scores were more or less the, just the, the finishes, and um, it was it was kind of the work that was done behind that that was the most impressive thing. And um, you know, we had leaders all over, unbelievable um, players in the backs of midfield were outstanding today. Worker, it was unbelievable. Kevin McCarthy came on at half time, just before half time, and it was unbelievable as well. So you know, we had a pick of players today. Um, the main thing, I suppose, from our point of view, was our work rate was through the roof. Uh, lots of mistakes, lots of things to you know work on, but a good day out. You've got a couple of younger players now snapping at your heels. Yeah, it's always good. Um, they showed up today and they performed. Gavin White and Brian Begley and uh, David inside as well. You know, they were all excellent. Um, Michal Burns in the, in the half forward line as well. So, you know, it's great to have that competition in the panel. And you're looking to be in a very strong position now as you go on to the Super 8s. Yeah, um, I suppose it's, it was a target, obviously, at the start of the year, trying to get to the Super 8s. And uh, that's happened now. So, eyes go forward now and the work begins for that. Well, congratulations. You are the air man of the match. And Sarah Keating from Air is here to make the presentation tonight. Well, in an excellent team performance, I don't think too many people could argue with that uh, choice at the end. Kieran Whelan, you have picked out uh, a piece for us which you're sort of titling the Kerry Press and, and just to show, I think you were yeah. talking about the, the kickouts earlier on and so they, forth. They, they, they set the tone right from the off, Michael. They backed themselves to really press Cork and push them into their own half. And particularly in that first half, no matter how many... Cork defenders were back. Kerry put there. We've 12 in the in the half. The keeper's no option short. He has to go long. And Kerry are backing themselves then to win 50% of the kickouts. And I put them on the front foot so often. Again, you see here, just so tight, man on man, no options to the kickout. Look at the far end of the pitch. There's loads of space there. But Kerry backed themselves, squeezed the life out of Cork. Again, ball comes out and Kerry Kerry Kerry, Kerry on the front foot. Same second half. Even when they went ahead. Here they are again, not giving them any... any. Cork had, couldn't get round it. They had no way of getting a platform or winning possession. And as Kerry were dominant in the middle of the, p middle of the park, they just took over. But look at the other end of the pitch. Here's Kerry. There's six defenders, all in a tight little group. Mm -hmm. And then they break out into the space to give Shane Murphy options off the kick out. So tactically, like for me, Fitzmaurice got it so well at both ends of the pitch. He didn't let Cork play, but they were very structured and organised in their own defence as what, well. What I would like to see is, and, and, and the reality is, we're talking about Kerry scoring, but it's a defence that probably hasn't been tested. And, and they were brave today. I think they, they knew that Luke Connolly was the main threat. Jason Foley did a great yeah. job on him. Luke Connolly but, didn't perform. He was, he was poor, wasn't he? Yeah. Well, he, 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 job, yeah. he was well marked, but yeah. at, the, at the same time, I, I would have liked to have seen it. And I think Kerry need tested at the back I, I, you know you, you look at their defence and it hasn't got the household names now they played well today but if against the Dubs or, or against the Galway they have three or they, four they, dangerous they players they trust themselves that, with the forwards I was just going to say I, I think they're going to trouble a lot of other teams <laughs> at the back <laughs> ok lads let's say I guess a few more opinions on this evening's Munster Football Final we have Colm Cooper and Breach Stack with us and they are down pitch side and I know Colm Cooper you are a happy man this evening you were watching uh, that second half with us up here in the studio and it was good watching from a Kerry point of view? Yeah, look, certainly, Michael, I think if you're a Kerry fan leaving tonight, you're very, very happy. It's a very pro two very promising performances now in the Munster Championship, and the future looks very, very bright for Kerry. The young players that have come in have really settled in. We didn't know, would it, would it be this year or next year before they really settled down, but they're very comfortable in there, and it's, um, it's very promising for Kerry, for, for Cork. After a big win against Tipperary, there was a hope here that they were going to really battle and put it up to, put, put it up to Kerry, but it didn't come today. Uh, and there's a long journey ahead of them. There is. Breed, you were also watching uh, part of that with us up here yeah. uh, in the stand. That first 10 minutes, the two goals by Cork, and you were whooping and hollering as every Cork person was. <laughs> but unfortunately, after that, it went a bit pear-shaped, didn't it? Yeah, that's it. Like, it was brilliant to see Cork take the game to Kerry um, in the opening stages. And I think, as well, what was a massive loss to them was uh, Rory Dean getting black-carded. He was involved in the two um, goals. And, you know, I thought... They, kind of, they lost the leader um, in him going off and I think they just lost their way a small little bit. But I think what today proved is maybe, you know, the Cork are unfortunately a small bit one-dimensional and, um, you know, just okay. didn't, didn't have that, um, that long ball ethos that Kerry had. And, um, you know, Kerry just looks so, so comfortable on the ball. Um, I think, yeah, Cork have, have a long way to go. All right, thanks very much to the two of you. Uh, that's just about the size of it, I think, uh, in terms of that match. Just want to mention very briefly, that's another match. Mayo, of course, were playing today. They had a win over Tipperary. They were three points down with a few minutes left, and they won by eight. They were, and they got a very fortunate goal, Patrick Durkin, but 
you have to give it to them. They were resilient. They held in there. Shades of last year, whereby there was, they were put to the pin of the corner a couple of times in the qualifiers. Where it'll get really interesting now is we've got six big teams coming into the next round of the qualifiers and four of them from Division 1. So yeah. I think round three is going to be really... And they are and also in the qualifiers. If Cork win their next match, they will be playing the dubs down here. Yeah, well, that's, you know, they've got to win the next match. I and mean, so many times we've seen provincial losers struggle. It's going to be a tough road for them to come back. Just the manner of the defeat, their body language at the end. But if they do get through the qualifiers, that is the incentive. One, one performance like against Tipperary, they're in the Super 8s and, and the Dubs be here in Parky Quay for, for, for a good weekend. All right, thanks, lads. And that takes us to the close of our programme for this evening. Thank you for watching. Now, hopefully, you'll be able to join us for the Sunday game tomorrow, 10 past one, here on this channel. But in the meantime, have a good Saturday night.